How are you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And the shortwave band conditions haven't been too good. And this is <laughs> this is how I've been feeling. Not too happy. And I just, you know, it's it happens, and there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. But it, it will get better. That's the one thing about shortwave. You know, conditions can be terrible one minute and all of a sudden they're great the next minute. But right now, we're kind of in a down cycle. And that's partially due to the solar weather conditions. And as you can see right here, the solar flux index is only a 90 today. It's a little better in that it has been in the 80s, but it's only 90, and you want typically that number to be above 100. Now, it's not going to be above 100 for any length of time for quite a while. Like I say, at any time it could recover for, you know, a couple hours or so and everything's fine. But this is the reason is this sunspot number progression. It's, a, it's called an 11 year solar cycle. And as I said, the sunspot numbers in the SFI, solar flux index, has an association with shortwave listing. And when the sunspot numbers are down, and the SFI is down. Typically, shortwave receptions is not going to be too good. And so here we're going through this 11-year cycle where conditions are good, and then they go bad, and then they come back over an 11-year cycle. And you can see, um, in the past 16 years, it's been that peak here has been declining. See up here was 125 thereabouts. This year it only peaked to 75, 80. That's in spot number. That's not solar flux index. And now it's heading down and here we are in this is updated to March 2016 and here's the trend, this red line and you can see it's heading for the seller, which means possibly shortwave listening is not going to be that great that often. But there is good news. There is good news. So you can get a happy radio. And what I mean by getting a happy radio is using a scanner radio. And there's hundreds and thousands of them out there for either new or used. Um, I can come down here. Here's one that I, I have two of these. These are really nice radios. They're not the latest version, so they, they are not a digital capability scanner, but they do work analog and they do work trunking if you want to listen to fire EMS. If you're not interested in trunking, Systems Fire EMS. You can get something like, um, see if I can find another one that I've got. Here's a Pro 97 I've got. I actually have two of those. Again, it will do trunking. And you can look up what trunking's all about. Or you can use an older one. Uh, let me see, see if I can find one of my older ones. Oh, I had these marked, but my marking went away for some reason. But anyway. Anyway, you know what I mean. Here's here's one I have. I think this is a 404. I think that is a 404. This is yet an older one. And uh, I, you can get these for as cheap as $25. Now, $25 ones is limited they typically only go up to 512 megahertz where like the pro 97 will go up to almost 
one gigahertz. So you can get stuff in the 900 megahertz range and the 800 megahertz range. So now the question is, what is there to listen that's not in the shortwave band? So what's, you know, what's there to listen to that's above 30 megahertz? We can go to this website here. It's dxing.com, and this page is slash above 30.htm and it lists the things that are on above 30 megahertz which is what you can still get now and when you get above 30 mega 30 megahertz which is considered vhf very high frequency and uhf ultra high frequency it's typically line of sight unless there are some atmospheric conditions that will let these signals propagate for longer distance. And those conditions can come about even when we have low slower solar activity. And they're usually for a brief period of time, maybe one or two hours, um, random days. You don't know exactly when they're going to happen. So except for that, your, most of these is going to have to be local communications, almost line of sight uh, within oh, 100 miles or less. But here are some things you can listen to. And uh, one of the things that can improve your listening on these frequencies is to get an outside antenna. And that outside antenna will be much different than your HF antenna. Typically, um, a disc cone, what's called a disc cone antenna. And I've done some shows where I've actually shown you videos of my disc cone antenna. And the one I use most often is really simple. It's just got, oh, a half a dozen radials, you know, spikes sticking out. Uh, originally sold by Radio Shack for... 1695 you can still get them but they're um, they're about double that price nowadays like everything else everything's doubled so you need to get a good outside antenna and bring your signals into your house you can use either a desktop or a handheld scanner Okay, let's kind of just briefly go through this list, and like I say, I'll uh, put the website address of this particular website down in the description so you can go to it yourself and look at it in more detail. Um, starts off from 30 to 50 megahertz. Most of the transmissions in this band are FM, um, the various stations, business, federal, state and local you can go to radioreference.com and look up what frequencies are active in your particular area so that's how you find some frequencies um, then from 50 to 54 that's the six typically that's the six meter amateur radio band and that gets active during these periods and mainly because the HF bands are dead so the amateur radio operators go to six meters now again it's one of those bands that's only open occasionally but when it's open uh, these amateur radio operators can work around the world okay 54 to 72 used to be the TV channels 2 and 3 and 4 not anymore. That's TV is gone all digital, so you won't find anything down there anymore. 72 to 76 is used for remote control signals from model airplanes. I believe also they have gone to higher frequencies. Um, 76 to 88 megahertz, again, was uh, TV channels 5 and 6. Not anymore in the United States. 88 to 108 is FM stations. Again, that's something that you can monitor um, late at night and see if you can pick up some distant FM stations. That's a hobby all by itself. 
Uh, 108 to 136 is the Civil Aeronautics Communications. It's in the uh, AM mode. A lot of aeronautical beacons occupy that range. You can also receive um, traffic control tower communications in that area. 136 to 138 is a segment that is used by weather satellites. And you can actually, with your computer and a little piece of software and a radio that will tune in that frequency, you can actually download weather pictures from the satellites going overhead. And that's a whole hobby by itself. I was really heavy into that for many years ago, but not as much anymore because there's so much weather information on the internet. Although, you know, I got I got a I still get a real thrill of having it set up, and I still have a setup for that. I have a twenty dollar antenna, a twenty dollar radio that I use to do that because it's in a band that most of these radios, scanner radios, will tune. You do have to. Uh, have a wide band scanner radio but you can make a simple mod with a capacitor to take almost any scanner radio and get that wide band so that you can receive good weather pictures okay let's jump up a little bit um, 138 to 144 there's lots of military services again this is local line of sight but it's a little longer distance because the aircraft will be going to be up in the air and so you can hear them a little better at least from the aircraft not from the stations okay and then uh, 144 to 148 is the amateur two meter that's like called uh, radio band and again it will become more active because the HF bands are kind of dead right now and let's, let's jump around here to do 20 now 225 to 400 megahertz is another military aviation communications band but not all scanners will scan in that range so you have to if you want to do that you want to listen to uh, military aircraft communications in that band you have to look to make sure the scanner you get has that band. And then we can go up to, let's see, where's the, oh, there it is, 420 to 450 is called the 70 centimeter amateur radio band. And these two bands, the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter, if you get the minimum amateur radio license which is pretty easy to pass um, you can get on the air and communicate in this band and it's called the technician's license and oh goody the phone's ringing well let my wife pick that up and then uh, used to be from 825 to 849 this used to be uh, where you could listen to cellular phones when they were analog. They're no longer analog, so you no longer can... You can listen, but you're not going to hear anything that's discernible. And then um, above um, 894 is where some of your trunking systems are. Uh, also, um, 866 to 869 is public safe, safety and law enforcement. Again, you'll need a scanner that has trunking capability. And like in my area, the uh, services have gone to digital, so I would have to buy a digital trunking radio, which I don't have. They generally are close to $500. That's why I haven't bought one. So anyway, that's other things you can listen to and you can find all kinds of communications above 30 megahertz it just takes a little patience 
like I say, you can go to radioreference.com, get some frequencies from there. Um, there's other places you can find details about specific frequencies above 30 megahertz that are being used. So if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.